Okay, well, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, uh, and thank you all for inviting me. Um, ooh, hold on. Zoom is doing that thing where it puts my windows where it doesn't need to be. All right. Uh, so access to the tools of science is rarely equitable, and nowhere is this inequality of access more pronounced than in the ocean sciences, where all but a few entities have the capital to mount major oceanographic research campaigns. Uh, I come from the world of deep sea ecology, where our budgets can very quickly climb into the tens of millions of dollars, but even small scale coastal research can be stymied by the need for vessels, equipment, and instruments, access to which is often controlled by research institutions. And for ocean knowledge seekers who lack academic credentials or significant financial resources, accessing the fundamental tools of marine science can represent an insurmountable barrier. This is a huge problem. Uh, as the need to understand the dramatic changes happening both at the surface and beneath the waves accelerates, barriers to access that precludes the participation of the full breadth of ocean stakeholders is going to erode our potential to understand, anticipate, and mitigate those changes. Uh, I believe that the ocean belongs to everyone and that the tools to study the ocean should be available to anyone with the curiosity and motivation to pursue that inquiry. And chief among those tools is the workhorse of oceanography, the CTD. So a CTD is a device that measures salinity, temperature, and depth. Uh, these are fundamental parameters that you need to conduct almost any ocean science study. It can be used to profile a water column, affixed to other instruments to correlate observations to water conditions, or deployed as a fixed mooring for long-term monitoring. Almost all marine scientific research includes a CTD cast. Ecologists need to understand the environment that their study species live in. Aquaculturists need to continuously monitor the water quality around their fish or shellfish pens. Conservation workers need to document changes in water health and quality. Climatologists, sonar technicians, lifeguards, documentarians, fishermen, river keepers, and even the kid taking a swim in the Chesapeake Bay who just wants to know if the sea nettle season is over all benefit from CTD data. But CTDs are expensive. Uh, handheld commercial units cost upwards of $6,000 USD, and larger systems can easily climb into the six figures. This creates a barrier to access for many of the people most imminently affected by our changing oceans. So the open CTD is a low cost open source alternative to commercial CTDs designed for budget restricted scientists, educators, and marine practitioners working in nearshore coastal ecosystems where entire research projects can be conducted for less than the cost of a commercial CTD. The sensor quality is acceptable for the majority of ecology and conservation studies. Uh, you probably can't use it for chemical or physical oceanography, uh, but for, um, it's well within the accuracy and precision range for things like ecology and conservation and environmental monitoring, and it can operate to a depth of 140 meters. Uh, an open CTD, in contrast to commercial units, can be built for about $350 in parts and another $200 in tools and consumables. Uh, so to get into the guts of it, uh, the brain of the open CTD is an Arduino microcontroller. It talks to a real-time clock as well as an SD card reader where all the data is logged. And all of those components, uh, when combined with a commercial chip, unfortunately the only closed source piece of technology in the system, uh, but it's needed to interpret salinity, and a 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery form the control unit. Uh, the control unit then interfaces with a sensor package that includes a battery of three temperature sensors, an absolute pressure sensor, which provides depth, and a graphite probe, which measures conductivity, which is what we then translate into salinity. Uh, everything is housed within a very boring PVC pipe, uh, and the sensors are fully potted in epoxy. Uh, the open end is capped with an off-the-shelf pressure cap that tradespeople use to test pipe work, but that we found will hold pressure down to 140 meters. Uh, this means that a fully watertight enclosure can be constructed for about $8. Uh, in comparison, a housing of similar quality from a company like Blue Robotics, which, by the way, Blue Robotics is a fantastic company that makes excellent housings at fair prices, but even their cheapest housing would be about $117. But that's, that's not the entire open CTD story. So from the beginning, the vision of the open CTD was that it would be built by the end user. Uh, we created a guide that walks users through the process of sourcing materials, downloading software, 3D printing components, assembling electronics, and calibrating the finished instruments. A lot of that documentation development was uh, funded by a grant from uh, the Open Science Hardware Foundation and GOSH. Uh, and this helps alleviate the other major hurdle to operating an oceanographic research program. Uh, commercial equipment, even once you've bought it, 
uh, generally requires an ongoing relationship with the manufacturer. And a service contract over a five or 10 year period can dramatically exceed even the original cost of the equipment. So not only does the OpenCTD provide a device at relatively low cost, but it also provides the expertise necessary for the creation of local capacity. OpenCTD users can service and maintain their own equipment, repair damaged units, and even build new ones as needed, entirely independent from the OpenCTD team. Uh, so anyone can build their own OpenCTD, but the ma major way that we've kept the program funded is through hosting training workshops to teach students how to build the instrument. Over the last few years, I've hosted CTD building workshops local to me in Maryland uh, with marine educators at the Stellwagen Bank National Marine Sanctuary uh, and remotely with middle and high school students in Homer, Alaska. For students, the process of building an open CTD offers an introduction to coding, 3D printing, hardware prototyping, uh, electronics, and can provide a practical foundation for courses in earth science and marine and environmental sciences. We're in the process right now of developing a conservation technology class uh, around the OpenCTD platform. Uh, students come out of these workshops feeling a sense of accomplishment, and their newfound understanding for how data is produced promotes a greater appreciation for the process of science. Uh, and a student with no prior experience in electronics, soldering, coding, or fabricating uh, can build, calibrate, and deploy an open CTD over a long weekend. And we've done that with students as young as 12. Uh, so this, this approach highlights the core principles of the open CTD program. Uh, we want our devices to be as inexpensive as possible while still producing high quality data. We want everything we, can pos we possibly can to be released under an open source license so that anyone can take the base open CTD and expand, iterate, and adapt it to their needs. And we want the materials we use to be as accessible as possible so that people who want to build a CTD can find the parts they need in their local hardware and electronics stores and from major online retailers. Uh, and we have another core value. Uh, so there's this phenomenon in science called parachute science, which is when researchers from rich, usually Western countries, drop into poorer countries, collect data that enriches their careers, and then disappear, providing no material support for the people and communities most directly, con connect most directly connected to that data. Um, a similar concept exists in the conservation technology world where wealthy developers devise one-size-fits-all technological solutions that are then deployed to much fanfare in places that may neither need nor want those tools and lack the capacity or desire to maintain them. This phenomenon is called imported magic. And we want the open CTD to reach beyond imported magic, to promote ownership over not just data, but over the tools and skills to acquire that data. We focus on conservation technology that promotes ownership and data independence within communities so that research priorities can be set by knowledge seekers, not by funders, and reflect and respect their specific needs and values. But absolutely none of that matters if the data is no good. Uh, so salinity, for example, is an incredibly tricky thing to measure, not the least because as researchers, um, we don't actually know what we're measuring when we're measuring salinity. I don't know if that's particularly widely known outside of ocean science, but we don't know what salinity is. Um, and that's why we no longer even report salinity in parts per thousand um, when we don't know what those parts are, but in uh, the unitless practical salinity unit. Uh, so over the course of 2023, we've conducted a series of head-to-head -head tests between open CTDs and both precision commercial benchtop probes uh, and NOAA data buoys to help assess not just the quality of the open CTD data, but the post calibration sensor drift. Uh, so this chart is from uh, an upcoming paper we have, and it shows one of our tests where open CTDs calibrated using a variety of different protocols um, designed to work under different environmental conditions and under different access to resources, uh, all fell within a 5% margin of error from the commercial benchtop instrument. Uh, and the CTD calibrated using our recommended calibration protocol fell within 1% uh, of the commercial unit. Uh, and we see similar results in the field as well. So last year we sent open CTDs to naturalists working aboard commercial whale watching boats throughout New England to log and upload opportunistic data while bringing tourists out to view whales. This is a, a great example of a natural uh, partnership because whale watching boats, at least in the US, are required to stop moving when whales are present. And that gives them a window of time for naturalists to talk about whales and whale conservation and also conduct a CTD cast to collect primary data uh, during their pause. Uh, so over 2021 and 2022, we collected more than 50 CTD casts from along the North Atlantic seaboard and were able to validate their data against fixed NOAA monitoring buoys. Um, so our data is literally good enough for government work. 
<laughs> uh, these are uh, areas off the coast that are highly trafficked, but rarely do researchers collect oceanographic data at this level from these areas. And this kind of data can be invaluable as a baseline or for detecting local changes in oceanographic patterns. Uh, and when we look at the sensor drift, uh, after these heavily used and abused CTDs came back to the lab, we found that even after 18 months and dozens of casts, the sensors held their original calibration with minimal drift. Um, so I'm going to leave the thank you slide up while I talk about what's next, but I'm going to add uh, one more person to the thank you slide because Harold Tay has actually helped significantly over the last few years uh, with a lot of our electronics work and has been an invaluable partner in this project. Uh, we have a paper in review validating the open CTD data, uh, which will help us establish greater trust within the formal scientific community. Um, we're imminently about to issue the fifth edition of the open CTD construction and operation manual after spending the summer reviewing every step of the workflow. Uh, and we're working on developing workshops in New England and Ghana for the summer of 2024. Uh, and we're also working on integrating a 3D printable Niskin bottle into the open CTD so that research researchers can take water samples at discrete depths. And we're slowly de developing a higher resolution open CTD uh, that will have more precise sensors and a greater depth rating. Uh, and I think I'm probably right at 10 minutes there. So I'm just going to say uh, thank you.